Usually being a seafood specialist doesn't entail looking at human corpses. My job is to identify those generic filet fish the mystery meats, you know, the yields of the bustling harbor. On one special day, however, I was deployed to a very different sort of site. This was not the place to see piles of slimy slack jaws or boxes of vacuum-sealed battered bars of meat. No, these fishes were meant to parade about carefully cleaned viewing windows. Or at least they would have. The storage area of a pet store was not a totally new sight to me. On other occasions, I had inspected pet shops to make sure very few invasive species were being touted out like cheap candy. But this back room was different. It was unkempt, disorganized, with leaning towers of musty boxes. The smell of expired fish was unmistakable. The authorities wanted me to check the whole building for any clues I could find. Apparently, look for any clue meant look for the fishes. The tanks in the bank were empty and dry, as were those of the display cases. That grimy tackiness so indicative of putrid fish juices was everywhere. Some chunks of flesh were in a singed metal garbage can. The creature that perished in this macabre pet parlor was a fancy goldfish and nothing more. This one had been a strain that is prized and highly valuable for the bulbous growth on its head. They called them flower horns. Maybe you've seen a few yourself. This was not the venomous or particularly pathogen-ridden sea demon those authorities may have been looking for. The office, though, was where it dawned on me that this was not a black market type of deal, or at least nothing mundane. The man's flesh had seemingly erupted from his swollen ears and somehow come to cap his greasy head. It looked like cheese curds, gray and white curdled lumps. The poor fish trader had been dead for quite some time. Gold became the new code red in hospitals around the nation. Many fish owners came down with strange symptoms. A young child suffered the condition, whatever it was, that killed the pet shop owner. The others were similarly horrific but unique. Some of them had eyes popping out, hanging, swinging in and out of their drooling, gaping mouths. Two of them almost instantly gained more mass than their bulging figures could support and were wheezing heavily. Perhaps what shook me up the worst was that one kid. This one kid had been given a fish from a top quality breeder of fantails. She named it Guppy. Fantails don't actually have fan-like tails. It's actually two tails. A full duplication of the lower body that people rarely seem to find amiss. It is just a pretty fish, after all. As her parents berated the clerk who was trying to fit them in, their daughter watched TV in the lobby. When a loud clack of the front door sounded, the twisted lower half of a child's body, emerging from one side of her torso, hastily swerved in response. Her main body stayed fixed in place as she watched Sesame Street. She rubbed her pink shoes on the floor as she imitated one of the characters. The other feet were still facing behind her towards the doorway. They wore little Spider-Man sneakers.